It's ten past nine in the evening in London when the British Airways A380 takes off from Heathrow. After 11 hours, we land gently on the runway of OR Tambo Airport in Johannesburg. It's 10.15 in the morning in South Africa, 8.15 in London and 9.15 in Paris. We have five and a half hours wait at the airport before taking off for Uppington. Uppington is considered the gateway to the Kalahari and in particular to the Kalagadi Transfrontier Park where we will spend eight days. We arrive at our final destination at 5.15. Henny has reserved a room for us at the Maxton Boutique Hotel. This is the fourth time that Henny Prinslow has been our tour guide and organiser in Africa. He'll be here any minute. It's nine o'clock and our luggage is loaded and we're off for a new adventure. But there's trees that was blown over. It was quite stormy and gusty. Yes, it must have been pretty horizontal. The yes, look at all this water. Yeah. The distance between Uppington and our destination is 250 kilometers. A surprise awaits us at the next crossroads. These men are Bushmen, the oldest inhabitants of Southern Africa. For tens of thousands of years they lived in Botswana, Namibia, South Africa and Angola. A movie made them famous. They've always been hunter-gatherers but since colonization they have been expelled from their territories. There are now about a hundred thousand Bushmen almost all of whom live in the Kalahari, in camps like the one we will see shortly. The Bushmen are dependent on government aid. Many become alcoholics and suffer from serious illnesses. Their original language is Khoisan, which is one of the click languages. <laughs> These two men also speak English and Afrikaans, a language most used by white people in South Africa. Henny has an ongoing project with them. When he has obtained their passports, he will take two of the men from this camp to Chobi, Botswana, where they will stock up on medicinal herbs. Henny is very friendly with the village shaman. Dave, Susan Darby. Hey. Okay, Darby. Yeah. David, eh? David. Yes, David. 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 If you listen carefully, you'll hear the click, impossible for us to imitate, when he says his name in his language. Kopan. Kopan. Yeah. If you don't have the name, Kopan. 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 Where is Kopan? He calls he's, he calls himself pota uh, sweet potato. Yep. Sweet potato. Yep. Yes. Yes. You are right. Yeah. He is the sweet potato. Yeah. I was here on Friday. They were making music huh? yeah. with a the guitar. They were having nice music tunes here going. It was nice to see. Yes, man. Because I was asking about uh, Easter, the other guy I know. And, and, yeah. and you seen uh, uh, this one? Uh, I, I, I look to the guitar ah, and paint it. Is there any painter that will be so taken? At the edge of this road that leads to the Caligari Park, they sell traditional handicrafts to tourists. A few hundred meters away is their village, rather the camp where they live. <laughs> so many. Yes. Uh, we brought three soccer balls and we're going to give them one now. Oom David Oom David and Tani Anne Marie van van Frankrijk and England will for the kinders a soccer ball here. Alle moet krijgen. Is het recht zo? Is het recht met jullie? Ja. Spelen jullie soccer? Want het is voor de World Cup soccer. Ja. 
So Dave, you must give it to this man. <laughs> Let him do his tricks and then he can give it to the kids. Yeah. And this is from France. France. And this is from France. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anima, get set. Let it soak her man or two. Yay! Yes. 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 They, they work uh, on the farms. These poor people are therefore housed in this so-called relocation camp, which looks more like a shanty town. If they never return to their ancestral lands, their unique culture and way of life will be destroyed and they will disappear. And it's just sad, they can't live what they wanted to live. We're going to sleep in a lodge seven kilometers from the park entrance. A new day begins under the clouds. The rainy season has already started in this part of South Africa. Henny told us about torrential rain a few days before we arrived at his camp. This giant millipede has actually only 256 legs, but it can reach 38 centimeters long and two centimeters in diameter. So on the right hand side is Botswana and the left hand side is South Africa. You're welcome to uh, step out of the vehicle, walk around, even have a look at the reception. Might take me about 20 minutes. We are at the entrance of the Kalagadi National Park, a name which means the land of thirst. It is roughly the size of Switzerland but we'll stay within the perimeter that I show on the map. The Nosob River serves as the border between South Africa and Botswana. The riverbeds of the Nosob and Oaba rivers are dry. In fact, the only two main dirt tracks are in the beds of these rivers. They are said to flow only once in a century. The temperatures are extreme, the sand can reach 70 degrees on the surface of the ground, exposed to the sun during the summer months. But the temperature can drop to minus 14 at night in winter. This young male is a gemsbok. It's the animal represented on the logo of the park. I will talk about all these animals again because we will see them very often during our stay. This extraordinary bird is called a secretary bird, which is surprised in action here. It hunts on the ground by hitting its prey with its legs or beak. Grasshoppers, lizards, snakes, anything. But its favorites are snakes. Its long pinkish and featherless tarsi are covered with thick scales which protect it from bites. When it takes its prey in its beak, it swallows it whole no matter how long it is.
This pretty animal is a steambok, one of the smallest antelopes in Africa. Adult, it measures 70 centimeters at its withers and never weighs more than 20 kilos. We're entering the camp of Matamata. Mata. The car is in South Africa. Me too, of course, since I'm next to the car. But on the other side of the fence is Namibia. At the Matamata Mata camp, there are very comfortable chalets with clear and nice views of the waterhole. The springbok is an animal well known to rugby fans since it's the emblem of the South African rugby team. Unlike our European squirrels, the ground squirrel is a terrestrial animal that lives in colonies in underground labyrinths. It's only found in southern Africa in the hot desert regions. It eats plants, roots and fruits but obviously these ones are used to being fed by the visitors to the park. The giraffe is the tallest land animal. An adult male is almost six meters tall and its neck two to two and a half meters long. The tongue has a surprising blue or purple colour because it contains melanin which protects it from sunburn when it eats. After 15 months of gestation, the giraffe gives birth standing and the baby falls 2 metres to the ground. He is already 2 metres tall and weighs between 40 and 80 kilos. After an hour, it must stand on its feet to reach the mother's teats and stimulate the flow of milk. Otherwise, she abandons him or even kills him. It's six o'clock and we're heading back to camp. Henny suddenly spots movement in the dune grass. There's a lion here, there's a big female. Seven lions are heading straight for us. One male, two female and four youngsters about six months old. The Kalahari lion is different from other African lions. Its mane is darker and can even be completely black. It's better adapted to desert living conditions and can go several days without water as long as they can catch prey. They're on their way to the water hole which is about seven kilometers from here. In the plain, the springboks have not yet perceived the danger. The females could be mother and two daughters, could be mother, sister and a daughter. Now the herbivores have sensed the presence of the predators and are running away fast. Except these two springboks, unaware of the danger that awaits them. The lioness gave birth in the rocks of the dunes. The cubs stayed five to six weeks alone with their mother before being brought into the group. These are weaned but will remain with her for another two years. The lion population in the park is estimated to be 450. We have just spent more than three quarters of an hour with them 
and we don't have enough time to see them at the water hole. The camp closes at 7.30 and we're still 30 kilometers away. This herd of blue wildebeest is a very small herd as they can form herds of tens of thousands of individuals. Magic or not? Look at that. <laughs> Gold. <laughs> Golden. Bloody hell, it's like he's on fire. I think you've got magic there. See what I mean? You see the different colours? The neck of the giraffe and that of man have the same number of vertebrae, seven, but ours measure four centimeters and those of the giraffe, 25. See the batted fox? The batted fox is a small carnivorous canid. It has the distinction of having more teeth than all of the mammals, between 46 and 50. Put their ears to the ground, listen for insects, uh -huh. then start digging. Uh -huh. And that's what they eat, and they forage from underground. This African data looks like its cousins from America or Australia. Like them, it lives by rivers, and Henny wonders what it's doing here in a region where there are usually aren't any. These blue wildebeest, or black-tailed wildebeest, are widespread in southern Africa. They are antelopes that belong to the Bovide family. Their name is the translation of the Swahili, Gnu, an onomatopoeia representing the noise that these animals emit almost permanently. <coughs> At the age of one year, this young male was kicked out of his herd by the dominant male and joined a herd of bachelors. After reaching sexual maturity at three or four, it becomes solitary and attempts to establish its own territory. That's probably what this one is doing. It deposits a strong secretion that comes from glands located at the side of its head. This will signal to other males that this territory is already occupied. All giraffes have a unique pattern, like our fingerprint. Each spot helps regulate the internal temperature of the animal. It's surrounded by a system of blood vessels that function like a thermal window, releasing heat from the body. There is no water at this water hole. They come here to lick the stones that contain salt or calcium. They need 20 grams a day. Henny often sees them eating dead animal bones for the calcium and phosphorus they contain. In the animal world, the ostrich holds many records. It's the tallest and the heaviest of birds. The male weighs on average 120 kilos and measures more than 2.5 meters tall. Its egg is the largest of all eggs, up to 1.5 kilos. The ostrich is also the fastest land bird with a top speed of 70 kilometers an hour. But it's a bird that cannot fly. It's the female who broods the eggs during the day because her colour is lighter than that of the male. He, with his black plumage, broods at night, passing more unnoticed in the eyes of hyenas or jackals.
The long neck of giraffes allows them to reach the leaves of the trees on which they feed, and if the tree has no leaves, it can still be useful. Fortunately, the giraffe gets enough hydration from the plants it eats and does not need to drink every day. Drinking at ground level requires laborious and dangerous gymnastics because the giraffe is very vulnerable in this position. To protect the brain from sudden changes in blood pressure when it bends forward, the arteries have valves that regulate blood flow. We call this day the Day of the Giraffes. The only potential predator of the adult giraffe is the lion, but a giraffe can kill it with a single blow of its hoof. However, 75% of giraffes do not exceed the age of three months because of predators. A giraffe's heart weighs 11 kilos and is powerful enough to send blood to the brain two meters above it. It pumps 60 liters of blood per minute. The blood vessels in the legs of the giraffe have been studied by NASA for the designs of spacesuits. I didn't know it before making this film, but giraffes are in danger of extinction due to poaching and destruction of their habitat. There are only 110,000 left in the wild. Between 1985 and 2015, their number decreased by 40%. They have already disappeared from seven African countries where they once lived. Here is a family of African spotted eagle owls. They are found throughout Africa south of the equator, but nowhere else in the world. They live in sparsely vegetated savannas, but are increasingly found in cities. They feed on small mammals, birds, insects and reptiles, which they hunt at night. They have ear tufts that look like ears, but they are not. It's assumed that they mainly reflect the mood of the animal, for example, standing up in case of stress. Owls can turn their heads 270 degrees. They don't build a nest. The female lays two to four eggs directly on the ground or between rocks or in the nest of another bird. Five weeks after their birth, the young begin to leave the nest. At two months they can fly, but they continue to be dependent on their parents for a few more weeks. The cheetah has left, but anyway, he would not have attacked the wildebeest as they are too big for him. The African spotted eagle owls are still sleeping, but the children are up. Obviously they're not ready to leave the nest. We don't know exactly at what age the little ones become totally independent. 
It must be said that it's very difficult for these young to find a territory to start a new family. Settled pairs are very aggressive in defending their hunting grounds. Don't look at me like that. The young must find a space rich in food, but not yes. already occupied by a pair <laughs> which will hunt or even kill them. But for now, let's have some fun watching them. You can immediately recognize the Gemsbok by the white and black designs that decorate its head. Scientists believe these patterns help animals communicate. They would not have the same meaning depending on whether the animal is walking or running or whether its head is up or down. Depending on the situation, they could be a signal of alarm or recognition between members of the same herd. They are only found in desert regions of southern Africa where they have adapted perfectly to the lack of water and extreme temperatures. Here is a group of female springbok waiting for the rain to give birth to a single calf. Then they will join the herd and will be part of a harem of a dominant male. It's perhaps to win this title that these two young males seem to be challenging each other. When they want to escape a predator, the springbok can run up to 90 kilometers an hour and leap 15 meters and more than two meters in the air. This little bird is probably the most abundant wild bird on the planet with a population of around one and a half billion individuals. It is widespread in Africa, south of the Sahara, in savannas with trees or bushes. It feeds mainly on seeds and it can fly in flocks into cultivated fields where it wreaks havoc. For Africans, it is the most harmful bird on the continent. I've told you already that the Gemsbok is perfectly adapted to the desert and now I'll tell you why. For an animal of this size, its body metabolism is lower than normal, which means that its food and water needs are reduced. It doesn't sweat and its body temperature can rise up to 45 degrees. But it has a thermoregulation system that allows it to keep its head temperature at 38 degrees. At night, it rejects the heat accumulated during the day. Its predators are lions, hyenas, leopards and cheetahs which prey on the young. To defend itself, the Gemsbok lowers its horns parallel to the ground and then leaps forward with great precision. It has the reputation of being the only antelope capable of killing a lion or a leopard. Several were found dead after being gored by a Gemsbok. But generally, it prefers to flee since it can run at 65 kilometers an hour at top speed.
food may be plentiful, but it's not easy to catch. This little hawk won't eat any red-billed weavers this morning. We're going to stay three nights in the Kalahari tented camp, a few kilometers from Natamata. We hope to see you for the second part of our safari in our next video.